Hello, everybody. This is Rob Reinhold, and welcome to Maverick Trading's Levered ETF series. I've been trading for 25 years now, and the first ETFs were just barely getting created when I started trading, but now they are a major trading vehicle. So before we jump into levered ETFs, we got to make sure that everyone understands what a regular basic ETF is. So just for a little bit of time, let me go through what that is so everyone knows what we're talking about. Whenever you hear the term the stock market, that really doesn't mean anything. Look, there's several different exchanges where stocks are bought and sold on a daily basis and they go up and down. There's really no way to say, hey, how are all the stocks doing? And so they created these things called indexes that you could actually track what the market was doing, like the Dow Jones Industrial Average, the Standard & Poor's 500, the Russell 2000. And they created these as a way for someone to look at this number and say, oh, the market went up today, the market went down today, but it was just a collection of those 500 stocks that they put in there. In 1993, a firm called State Street created the first exchange traded fund called the SPY, or as was called the Spiders. This was developed to deliver the same return as the S&P 500 index. The great thing about these is it was a stock. It wasn't a mutual fund. It wasn't indexed. It could be directly bought and sold like a stock at any time at a really cheap price. This was a great alternative to mutual funds. Before ETFs, if you wanted to get the same return as the market, you had to pay a company probably somewhere around a half or 1% to run the money to try to get you the same return. Now it's as easy as just buying SPY. And these have options, which is awesome. We're an options trading firm at Maverick, so we absolutely love options on these ETFs. So here is the SPIDERS, the ticker symbol SPY. Now this ETF was created to give the same return as the S&P 500. Now the people that run this fund, they go in and they actually buy the actual shares of the 500 companies. Based on money flows coming into the market, when the market moves up, they've got to go in and buy shares. When the market moves down, they have to go in and sell shares. Now let's say that someone wanted to trade the spiders, but they wanted to get a little bit of leverage. So we need to go find the ticker symbol for that. So if you take SPY and you magnify it by times three, that's going to give you the symbol of UPRO, or what I like to call the UPRO. Here is a chart here of the UPRO, and you can see here, it's going to do the same thing as the S&P. However, the company that runs this, they are not buying stock. They're trying to get three times the return of the SPY. They're using options, futures, derivatives, and they're basically trying to get this symbol to match 3x of the underlying. Sometimes they get it right, sometimes they don't. Let's take a look of the SPY, which is on the left, and the UPRO, which is on the right. Now here's a chart of both of these symbols. I'm going to run them together, and you can see that they're basically going to do the same thing. Now one thing to understand is that the symbol on the right, the UPRO, is moving three times larger. However, because the scaling gets adjusted on the chart, the moves are going to be fairly identical on the chart. I just wanted to stop right here and say that there are two 3X long ETFs for the SPY. There's the SPXL and there's the UPRO or the UPRO. They're designed the same way. It's just two separate companies competing against each other to see who can get the lion's share of the volume. So let's take a look at which one is actually better. Let's take a look at the SPXL on the left and the UPRO on the right. And let's see how well they compare when we trade them side by side. As you can see, they pretty much do the exact same thing. But the big question is, when you're looking to trade, which one of these do I trade? Do I trade SPXL or do I trade UPRO? Which one is better? Well, the way to actually answer that question is to look at its returns and see which one was actually better. So right here, I've got the monthly returns for the SPXL. And you can see that we've got our monthly returns over here on the right. And you say, okay, well, that's what the SPXL returned. What about the UPRO? As you can see here, when you take a look at this month to month, it's actually pretty similar. This first month, 
negative 15.76 or negative 15.79. That is 0.03%. That's very, very close. But the question is, which one is better? And so what we need to do is look at the differentials over time. And you can actually see that the UPRO was actually slightly better. Over 12 months of time, it returned you an extra 0.01%. So yes, if someone asks the question, which one is better? Technically speaking, at least in this example here over this one year period, it was the UPRO. In all reality, this doesn't matter whatsoever. You can trade either one. Let's talk about how and when to trade UPRO safely. Now, the first and most simple way is to simply trade it as a stock. Now, remember, this is a 3x long ETF. We don't really want to go short these ETFs. It doesn't make any sense because we would rather trade the inverse ETF. So let's take a look at UPRO specifically. Let's make a trade here on UPRO. Now I'm going to be using TradingView's bar replay feature. Please check out our other videos to see how this works if you're not familiar with it. But basically what we're going to do is we're going to go in and we're just going to scroll back in time. Now I like to just scroll back, make my chart small, and then I hit the bar replay button and then I simply click on a day. Once I do that, it will snap into that day. Now we can basically simulate trade this symbol. Now remember, this is the long 3X SP500. So we only want to buy it. We never want to go short these. We'll just simply buy the inverse ETF. So at this one, we're only looking to be long and we just had a big run here off the 50 period moving average, hitting a period of consolidation. So for me, I'm looking at this range here saying, okay, it looks interesting here. If we can break above this range, I'll take a look at uh, an entry point. And you can even set out your orders that just say, hey, you know what? I'll go ahead and buy this uh, if it does break above this uh, 44, 45. We can set that order out there. And if it breaks out, we will automatically be in it. If not, there's no, there's no trade whatsoever. So I'm now just going to hit the play button and let's watch this. See if it breaks out above that line. Okay, so we did not break out above that line. So at this point, we definitely do not want this order out here. Let's wait for another good buying opportunity. Again, we want to see, again, moving averages substantially moving higher. Do you see how they flattened out here? This is where you don't want to be looking at it. When these moving averages start to steepen, and the trend starts to get stronger. We'll take a look at it that time. These moving averages are still not steep enough for me. I wanna see nice steep moving averages. Okay, now we're getting a move here. Now we're getting a nice move. Let's look at by this if it pulls back or if it bases. And sometimes it just doesn't. Okay, so here we have our pullback here. Now, this is a small pullback. I would love to see a pullback to the 20, but I'm going to go ahead and say, you know what? Let's jump into this right here. Let's go long at 5209 will be our entry point. And of course, everything needs its risk level. So I'm going to take a look all the way down here. Say, I'm going to use this 20 period moving average as my stop. So my stop is going to be down here at 48 ish. All right, at this point, We've set up the trade. It's either going to work or it's not. Let's see what happens. Now, what I'm going to do on this trade, and we'd love to do this at Maverick, is we use the 20 period moving average as a trailing stop. As long as this can stay above us 20 period moving average, we're going to be long and just ride this for as long as it can possibly go. Right now, at this point, again, we're moving up our stop. So we're stopped now. We've pretty much moved up to not quite break even yet, but we're pretty close to break even. Okay, we got knocked out right there. So again, we'd moved up our stop to 51. And at that point, we're going to be taking a little bit of a loss here on this trade. So look, this is just part of trading. It's part of how it works. And sometimes you get nice runners and sometimes you don't. As you can see, they trade just like a stock, but we need to talk about how it is absolutely different. Because the companies that run the SPY, the 1X ETF, 
they're buying and selling actual stock and they're able to get a very close to the same return as the S&P 500. The people running UPRO, they're trying to buy options, futures, derivatives, whatever they can to try to get three times the return. And sometimes they don't get it right. Take a look at 2020. 2020, the SPY, the S&P 500 returned 18.4%. The UPRO, the three times ETF, only returned 9.73%. That's a really big differential. So let's take a look at this differential here. So theoretically, the UPRO should return three times more than the S&P 500. Well, does it do it? And we can take a look at any one year. So here's 2018. The SPY went down 4.45% and the UPRO went down 24.9%. You don't have to be great at math to see that that's like 10 or 11% worse. So you're taking more risk when the market goes down and then take a look at a year like 2020. You don't even get three times the reward on the upside. It just isn't the same. And if you take a look at all of the years, here's a breakdown of all the years of SPY versus UPRO. You can see that there's only four years out of 11 where it actually beat the return. And you can see that there are a couple horrific years in there where they really underperformed. So these differentials are no joke. This is why we like these levered ETFs for short term trading a couple hours, a couple days, no more than that, because then you start to get into these differentials that are always laying you down. Because what happens is when the trade goes against you, you don't just lose 3x, sometimes you lose 4x. And when the trade goes for you, you don't make 3x, you make 2x. So the longer you hold it, the more these differentials matter. And these will always come with more fees. The SPY has a fee of 0.09%. And the levered ETFs are usually right under a percent. UPRO is a 0.95. You're going to be paying these fees every single time you make a trade in these ETFs. And at Maverick, we're an options trading firm. We love options. And sadly, there is no benefit to trading options on levered ETFs because the options market knows that they move three times more. So they simply adjust the options prices to reflect that. So we really like UPRO as a intraday or a swing trade, maybe up to a week or two is tops. That's all you want to hold these things. Let's talk about options trading. We love options trading. We absolutely love options. All options trading should be done on the 1X long ETF, SPY. And that's all bullish and bearish positions. You just simply want to go long with a call or a call spread or short with puts or put spreads, however you want to do it. All options trading should be done on the SPY. You're going to have the tightest spreads. You're going to have penny spreads on your options trades. If you go make an options trade on the UPRO, you're going to see the bid is $5 and the ask is $5.50. Well, that stinks because you're going to go look at the spiders and the bid's going to be 50 cents and the ask is going to be 51 cents. As a percent, that's a much smaller percentage you're paying in fees. And then last but not least, let's talk about using the UPRO as a hedge. Let's say there's a trader out there who's short $60,000 of S&P like stocks. Now again, you wanna choose the ETF that is the most closely aligned to what you're using to hedge it. So this will only work with someone who is short S&P like stocks. And let's say that they think the market is going to bounce short term. They don't wanna exit their position, but they also don't wanna sit through some pain all they need to do is to go over on the other side and simply buy $20,000 worth of the UPRO. Now, when they do this, they've effectively hedged out their exposure. And let's say that the market runs up 10%. Now, that's really bad for a short portfolio. And let's say the S&P goes up 10%. Their stocks that are short are likely going to go against them 10%. However, on the other side, the market goes up they're very happy in their UPRO that they bought $20,000 worth is going to go up about the same amount as their short stocks went against them, creating basically a net effect of plus or minus 1% as zero. They are effectively hedged. This is a fantastic way to use these levered ETFs is to hedge out existing positions. 
And let's talk about the biggest risk of these 3X funds. And this is what people don't understand. They look at these, they say, oh, Rob, I can make, you know, instead of making one to 2%, I can make three, five, 6% on trades. That's great. But take a look at these returns. There are some times when the market might go down 30%. Times that by three, add in some differentials. And you can see that you could potentially lose 90% of the position. If you make the position too big and you let it go against you, these ETFs can completely wipe out an entire portfolio. I've seen people do this with a hundred, two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars. They get into one of these levered funds, they let it go against them, and it goes to zero. It is devastating. You can only trade these if you respect what they are and you understand proper position sizing methodology. So to wrap this up, we love UPRO for intraday and swing trade. It's a great, great little product. You can get in there, get out, get quick, and you don't have to worry much about the differentials. If you want to trade options on the S&P 500, do it on the spiders, on the SPY. Do not trade options on these levered ETFs. It makes no sense. It's just more expensive. You're, it's the same trade as the SPY, but it's way more expensive on the bid-ask spread. And of course, using it as a hedge. This is another great way to use these leverage ETFs. If you've got other positions that you don't want to sell or you don't want to cover, you can go in and do hedges short-term with these levered ETFs. Thanks for joining me, everyone. Take care.